Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar video. In this one, I want to give a bit of an introduction to a lot of the new content that is in Avatar Generation. So we're going to go over uh, like new characters, new locations, uh, a little bit of like new kind of like flavor text, kind of lore type stuff. Um, straight away, I will say, look, this is nothing groundbreaking. There's nothing huge here. But if you do care about uh, the introduction of new characters into Avatar and have any interest in the game, you You've seen some stuff about it then it's definitely worth getting at least an intro into who these characters are so uh, i'm going to use avatar wiki as my main resource here because they have compiled a lot of the information text and stuff like that from the game quite nicely into their pages on the transcripts for the areas um item information as well as um you know pages for the characters as well so um, that's what we're going to be going off here. So if we just look here at like their main avatar generations page when you go down of course you get the idea of like here are your, some of your hero characters and and you straight away get the idea of like <clears throat> here are your new characters. So you can see here we have Bokeen, um, we have the dojo master of course, we have uh, Katsu, you can see that Jang from the comics is in here as well, Kiwok of course is in the game, uh, we also have uh, uh, who do we, who else do we have here? Uh, no, no, that, that that's it. Because, yeah, it lists heroes here, which is different than new characters. We do have a couple of new characters who aren't, like, playable within the game. But anyway, uh, then you get, like, the animal supports, which is nice. You know, some of these are a little bit more obscure. We don't see too often, you know, the, the meadow vole, the lion vulture, and the owl wolf, of course. Uh, and you get to see these, of course, as the, the game progresses. Even the spirit wolf as a kind of spirit animal is kind of cool. But what I just want to highlight here before we get into the characters is some of the little bits of information on the equipment to highlight that the devs here definitely know what they're doing. They know how to make the right references and stuff like that. There's nothing super new here, but the references feel nice on flavor text for like the arts and stuff like that. So, you know, the Amulet of Freedom is said to grant the wearer passage through hidden Dao Fei villages. So the whole point there is like it's just a reference to Dao Fei. But that's really nice to get, incorporating all we know about Avatar. You know, uh, an amulet recovered from the Siwang Desert, said to have originated from Wan Chi Tong's library. Very nice. Um, some of them are much more, like, uh, generic and stuff like that. But then, uh, Hidden Daofei Passages is referenced on this one. Um, an amulet fashioned during the rule of the 46th Earth King. Interesting. A book that apparently survived the destruction uh, at the library from Zhao. Um, quotes from avatars across the generations. Um, this one's quite interesting. A book that details the lineage of the rare um, bending ability of the Fire Nation. Now, when it says it's a book, it's not actually a book. You can't read anything more. This is all the information about the Book of Lightning is everything that's right there on screen. Otherwise, this is an item that you probably have like 50 of in your uh, inventory in the game if you've been playing for any length of time. But it's a nice little reference. And as you go through it, like there's so many of these little items like that that reference kind of small things like this. Feathers of a creature thought to only exist in the spirit world. Goose eel um, gets referenced there. Razor Reef, which is a location we'll briefly talk about. Um, and so on. There's the maps uh, that re get referenced here. Sudden Storms, uh, Secret Tunnel stuff for more recent um, stuff that we got. It's all pretty interesting here like secret codes of the white lotus so they're making a lot of references to that are quite good same with a lot of the relics you know you have yang chen's memorial um you have tian hai's hope um referencing like comics you have a great divide reference and stuff like that it's uh, the wanderer's veil which again I'll, I'll note when we get to talking about the dojo master and again they're going to keep track of a lot of this stuff here which is pretty nice. Similarly, they do also have transcripts for all the areas. So for instance, here is the uh, Patola Mountain Passage, which is basically the first area in the game. They have a transcript of like the entire dialogue kind of uh, passage uh, throughout this, uh, this whole thing, um, which is quite good. They have the whole thing for like the Icebound Labyrinth. So these are some of the new locations. Obviously the, the passage just before the you get to the, the Southern Air Temple. Icebound Labyrinth is your secondary water tribe, southern water tribe location. 
you have a uh, Shen Guan, which they actually have a proper page for. Uh, it's a fortress that is like the furthest location you can get to in the game, pretty much. Uh, and then there's also Razor Reef, which is a smaller location, but there's some interesting stuff going on there, which we will uh, get to. But I do want to start with the characters, because I think that's what everyone is sort of like here for, to know what these are about. So Xin Ming is a, one of the non-playable characters. She does not have like a unit that you can ultimately like summon in the game. She's more directly related to... Um, She's more of a support character to go along with the actual playable character from this region, which is the Dojo Master. And so that's what we're going to talk about here is the idea that in the Patola mountain range, in the passages just before the temple, they reveal here new information that Team Avatar came across these uh, hidden, a hidden dojo, uh, you know, on an island near the Southern Air Temple. And they just have this basically kind of like encounter with this kind of the people who um are part of this dojo and so Xin Ming is your sort of like main character to sort of like guide you through this process and the core story that happens here is that she reveals that basically um the group that follow the dojo master has become a bit fractured uh, a lot of them have gone down very specific paths in terms of their martial arts training based on different jings that they tend to prefer over the other. The dojo master has really gotten tired of how separate everyone is, and so there's this sort of like almost challenge that you have to either somehow <clears throat> unite uh, and, you know, open up the passage basically to face him, and if you do, he will allow access to sort of like the food food storage area again and people can eat again. And so, you know, you get this sort of idea. He's, he's challenging his students to find the correct way to kind of like solve his challenge, solve their individual problems. And so, yes, the group is broken down into basically there is one faction for positive Jing, one faction for neutral Jing, one faction for uh, negative Jing. So basically attacking, defending, and then waiting doing nothing um but the dojo master wants more balance because we know that there are technically 85 jings and one of the very interesting things that they reveal over the course of the dialogue here uh, if we get to it here is that yeah be careful the master the dojo master utilizes all jings when they fight not just the common uh three uh, and you know the, he, a lot of the students as they go through realize oh we lost to team avatar we should probably try and learn from the other Jings. Now, they never reveal what the other Jings are, which is slightly unfortunate, of course, um, that they don't reveal any of them. But apparently, the Dojo Master here is a master of, theoretically, all 85. Now, what that means, who knows? But it's still interesting as a concept. But, <clears throat> but anyway... So what happens here is, like, from a gameplay perspective, you go over to one side of the map, you face the defense group. You defeat them, you get their piece of the puzzle, you face the offense group, and you face the mind group, or the, the, the neutral Jing group. And when you do all that, you then challenge the dojo master. You defeat him, and this is where you get some kind of interesting kind of, like, dialogue here, where he, like, uh, discusses the idea of, where is it? Um... Uh, t t yeah, here. You have passed the test and beaten the challenge. You are the strongest here. That includes you, Xin Ming. And so this is your little kind of like emotional beat here. That Xin Ming, who doesn't actually like to fight and is just sort of like part of this kind of like group here. Um, she has, you know, united Team Avatar together to kind of unite the groups in full. That what you've done over the course of this has helped all of the different factions to realize they need to grow in the right way. And um, so just kind of highlighting kind of Xin Ming is a bit of a kind of more, you know, emotional like leader of this kind of uh, the dojo group here. And um, beyond that, like there's not a lot to get into necessarily here. Like if you read the Dojo Master page, Avatar Wiki have of course done a decent job at sort of turning relatively small amounts of facts into paragraphs of information about what actually happens. Um, and so you, you get little bits of things, like the, like the idea is that, you know, the Islanders suffered Fire Nation raids, um, they, they hired him basically, you know, train the locals, you know, um, and control what's going on here. There's a bit of setup for what's going on here. The main thing with the Dojo Master, though, is that they 
because they don't reveal if it's a, it's a it's a man or a woman or anything like that. We don't know who they are at all. Now, I'm not sure if it's meant to be any sort of a significant reveal with regards to like they're a, they're a known character. I'm and I'm guessing the reveal will more end up being something along the lines of like will everyone think it's a man but it's actually like a woman or will it be some sort of a surprising thing where like this is actually some amazing martial artist from like the Fire Nation and so it's actually somewhat significant that this character uh, has come to basically fight against the Fire Nation. We don't know but that's the whole kind of like point here. We don't know and it's more of a mystery with this character who they are. Now currently this is the ongoing event in the game so you can get the Dojo Master relatively easy if you've been playing and doing any sense of putting time into the game and the main two things that you're getting here are of course the dojo master themselves as a unit in the game but also the relic the unique relic which is the wanderer's veil which is the hat that the dojo master wears and them in combination with each other makes for a pretty nice uh, little combo here so that's cool they're, they're highlighting this is their kind of first big new avatar generations exclusive kind of character that they've written and i'm wondering as we go forward in the game and i think we will we'll go back and i'm hoping at some point they reveal what's going on here because one of the interesting po points in the game is if you go to your character screen there's kind of like three little icons on the side that just are not active in the game currently. Now, one of them is clearly for extra costumes, which will be added uh, at a later point. One of them clearly is some sort of a like lore or like fact file type thing that also isn't in the game currently. And I think there's like a favorites thing that also doesn't work. So I'm guessing the lore tab might get filled out. And then for this character, I'm guessing when, when they finally reveal who this character is, there'll be a sort of like with hat without or sort of like unrobed uh, kind of character or something like that where you see what they're like not being super super uh, heavily covered up um it's a little bit of a mystery is there anything too crazy going on with this character perhaps not but you know nice enough i think this is definitely a character who fits and in the context of like canon could you imagine that at some point early on in the group's adventure on their way up the southern air temple mountains they just had a little bit of an incident with the dojo master right before episode three you know perhaps and that's kind of like the pro the the slight issue here with this new stuff is that like the reason i'm not complaining about like it being vague and not super detailed is that this is information that they are trying to fit in in between episodes of the show basically from like a canon perspective so i'm glad that they're not doing huge stuff that theoretically should have been referenced in the show but can't be because it's like basically retcons and um, so i think they're they're with a character like the dojo master and the plot here that's a that's a good way to do it where there's some depth here but you also get why it perhaps isn't super heavily brought up later on. I think this is the right way to do it, while also still having a character who can have maybe a little bit of an arc if they ever return as we go through the game um, and, and maybe learn more about who they are. So, you know, that's cool. The whole, <clears throat> the whole Jings thing is actually kind of cool, but I do wish that there'd be some more reveals on even what like any other Jing actually is. But um, from there, we will move on. The basic, the, the mountain passage area is pretty basic. But we'll go on to sort of the icebound labyrinth stuff with Kiwok. So she's very cool. So as you, as, as you can see there, she is a waterbender. She's a pirate. And of course, it says there who descended from pirates who operated in the Southern Water Tribe hundreds of years before the winter of 99 AG. Um, now, technically from the dialogue, you don't get that much information like this quote here is actually probably one of the main ones here highlighting that like oh there's a bit of Dao face stuff you can connect that a little bit that very much comes across as wording quite similar to stuff that we heard for instance Tagaka talk about and I think they're heavily alluding to that that the whole icebound labyrinth area of the game is basically the hideout of these pirates where they stash their loot basically from everything that they've done and of course Tagaka is trying to you know that's why she's in the icebound labyrinth is to try and get the, that stuff back 
And what's even more interesting here is if you look closer into this and some of the early access stuff, because right now, of course, we have the powerful event banner for the Dojo Master. But we're going to get one eventually for Keywalk because that's already been in the game in early access. And um, now I missed it, but it was it was before I think it was like early December. So people have Keywalk as a character here because she is a playable character. And what they did was while the Dojo Master is Dojo Master and the hat. Keywalk, the item that she comes with that's basically exclusive is uh, this the Blade of Tagaka. So that's basically your confirmation here that, okay, Tagaka, sorry, uh, yeah, Tagaka and Kiwok are basically both Fifth Nation. Now, Fifth Nation might not be known as that uh, anymore in kind of like Ang era stuff, and they might just be Southern pirates, but that is the legacy, the kind of heritage we're kind of like talking about here, going all the way back to Kiyoshi's era. And the fact that the implication there would be that Kiwok technically, I suppose, quote unquote, has the Blade of Tagaka. Now, ultimately, that is an item that I think can be used on other characters. But thematically, they've paired that up with her, I think, very, very clearly for a reason. And with all of this information here, it seems to be pretty clear that she's like basically Daofei. That's the whole piracy stuff. And leaning in the direction of that kind of Fifth Nation style stuff. Kind of like Tagako was like. Um, so that's all kind of interesting. Now the other point here in the story here in the Icebound Labyrinth. Is that they have. Um, the, the reason they're there is that they've actually been hired by this character Wen. Uh, who wants to retrieve the Golden Line Turtle statue from the Labyrinth. Um, and you know they're just trying to help. But they just want the stuff for themselves of course. Because um it's it's theirs by legacy basically so when as you can see here they are a uh, non non-binary now this has been confirmed by the developers uh, i forget if in the dialogue this is referred to because i think what ends up happening here is that a lot of the scenes with when it is a character directly talking to them so you never get someone like referring to them while they're not in the same scene to kind of full on like confirm the kind of like pronouns that they're meant to be used that, that are meant to be used here but they have confirmed it sort of like off screen i suppose here um and that's just something that is interesting to note otherwise the character is um an archaeologist that is interested in relics and so this is a character who you really only find in the icebound labyrinth and then in the next area razor reef which is all about uh relics now not much to this character apart from just being your sort of you know archaeologist uh, you know from a university type thing uh, just out to kind of research the history of relics and stuff like that um and then you know the, the whole golden line turtle statue stuff is kind of interesting um but otherwise there's not too much really to be said there uh, for the most part um the whole thing with razor reef is that it's a very small area like you don't travel around the map it's just one icon uh, it's one of the longer timers in the game and the idea is that you are there researching the ancient sort of like scrolls left behind by master Tadao, this other mysterious character who seems to be a living character because i think when you get to the suki part of the dialogue she directly almost references Tadao as if like she knows him or is aware that he full-on is re real and everything about his trading methods are actually quite good. Now, from a gameplay perspective, the whole idea here is that this is the place you get the razor set of uh, artifacts from, which have like the, the kind of fancy critical kind of hit bonus type stuff going on with like a, a set bonus on them. Um, otherwise, it does seem to just be a thing where like people know master today as this legendary master who knows these secret forms of combat and so that's why basically you have kiwok coming here um at, at some point is that the next two characters we're going to introduce come here the kiyoshi warriors come here at a certain point as well but that's the thing with uh kind of like when as a character is just you know they're the relic character um, who's like the, the archaeologist. So that's, uh, you know, 
interesting by itself. And again, I'm assuming as we go through the game, when it's just going to turn up anytime there's like a relics artifact focused area and doing stuff there. Um, and we'll see if anything else of note kind of happens with this character. But that's uh, for now kind of I think all there really is to say. Next, we'll move into some of the Shen Guan characters, and there, there's two of them here, and it's basically rival captains on either side of the war, and in this case, the war is the defense of Shen Guan Fortress, basically. And um, so, as it says here, it's a it's a fortress town located southwest of Amashu. Like this is the area just before we're about to go into Amashu, which will be the next region we get in the game. And there's a big siege going on here where uh, Bokeen here, Captain Bokeen, I'm not sure about the pronunciation on his name. Um, he is the one leading the defense, whereas Captain Katsu here is the one leading the offense. And the idea seems to be that this has been a little bit of an ongoing thing for a while. These two characters sort of know each other and seem to have a little bit of a grudging respect for each other kind of type thing here. Um, and you get just the kind of plot here, which is that Team Avatar come in and after a bunch of kind of hijinks, like he doesn't believe who they are. Uh, Bokeen doesn't, you know, he says, I underestimated you. But uh, Team Avatar helps Bokeen defend from Katsu. But after Team Avatar moves on, the idea is that then um, Fire Nation forces, basically, you do the after story with your fire characters and you come in and this is where with Katsu, you sort of like win the battle and you kind of finally take over Shen Guan. Now, Bokeen gets away, which is why he then turns up later at Razor Reef um, <laughs> looking for the Master Tadao stuff. But it highlights that, you know, Shen Guan does ultimately fall. Now, this is where you get it. It's a little bit kind of like weird in that, like, you know, um, you know, they lost. And the as part of the story with the characters that you have at that point, you, you almost like have to use the likes of like Zuko, Iroh, probably a Zhao if you have them to take it back. But I think story wise, the implication is that that's not what happens. Team Avatar helps with the defense initially, but it's like your fire characters in general that help Katsu kind of like win the day type thing um do they mention it here the capture here do they do they highlight that it is zuko um counter attack the, okay, sorry it went down here um yeah, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's just meant to be a thing because they don't mention specifically Zuko or Iroh. And that's just part of like the gameplay because you're building ultimately kind of like a fantasy team throughout the game. There are some areas where it's very clear you have to use these story-based characters. There are some areas where they're a little bit more open about just use whatever characters you want to do this fight. Um, but you know, that that's what it is. Now, is there much character to the likes of Katsu and Bokeen? In my mind, not really. They're just meant to be kind of like named leader characters to have another Earthbender character, to have another Firebender character. There's nothing too crazy about them on like a, a kind of personal level. Like personality wise, you know, proud, brave, stubborn, that's standard Earth Kingdom kind of personality type stuff. You know, he didn't want the help of Team Avatar. Eventually he accepted it. Um, and yeah, you know, it, of course, doesn't like the Fire Nation, of course. Um, Katsu didn't fully conform to a stereotype. He responded by di dismissing the commander. Um, and yeah, there's just stuff like that. And I think it's pretty similar with Katsu, who uh, I don't remember much of really at all. Um, uh, yeah, just, just typical you know, pride in the Fire Nation, stuff like that. Um, you know, a little bit of depth going on here. And I think this is where like there could be some interesting stuff as this goes on. Because they both ultimately kind of like live to fight another day technically here. I'm guessing we might just have this ongoing storyline of these two always being on either sides of the battlefield um, at various different points in the story. And that a lot of the newer locations might kind of in end up involving these characters. We'll see what they do. Like, will this change? Like, will this eventually lead to some sort of a thing where like, this is this friendship thing that forms over the course of this. So by the time you get to the end of the story, these two are actually like friends. 
who knows there but there's there's some options you know to to go on with this um but you can see like the difference there like they're basically all the main characters so you have two sort of like more npc characters in zin ming and also wen but then you have your kind of more characters who you can have as part of your team the dojo master who's kind of interesting with the jings and the mystery of who they are kiwok who's interesting because one, they're like a waterbender, so that's a whole other thing of like being a waterbender during this era, a female waterbender as well. Did her being a pirate kind of, was that what kind of like saved her from ever kind of being hunted down by the Fire Nation? Or is she originally from like the north? There's some interesting stuff to consider there. But obviously the, the huge stuff there is the whole Tagaka connection. And like, is this a direct descendant of Tagaka from the Kyoshi novels? Um, that's super interesting with her. Um, and then you have uh, Bokin and uh, Katsu, who of course are, you know, Earthbender and Firebender. But it's just like opposing sides of this uh, conflict. Again, like there's 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 dialogue, you know. The reason I haven't referred to the dialogue all that much, I'll get to the sort of like Tadao stuff a little bit. You know, they mention here when mentions the the lost arts of Tadao, um, and Spear Soldier men mentions you know this is Master Tadao's hideout, and uh, Katsu is kind of uh, looking for it as well. All traces of his legacy. So there's obviously some implication that this is this kind of like legendary martial artist. And I'm kind of wondering, like, wait, is is this what we're going for? Like, that, like, Tadao is the dojo master? Like, there's a very obvious connection that could be the case. Um, It might be a bit too obvious, but, you know, th there's some interesting things to consider. Because uh, they're both kind of, like, mysteries. Um, they, they don't seem to have in the transcript here the Suki dialogue, which... Again, I, 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 got, I got to see it like once uh, and it was a few days ago, but I'm pretty sure Suki referred to Tadao as if like either she has trained with him before or is very aware that, yeah, Tadao is here. Like it's not, it's not like a legend or anything like that. Yeah, he's here. Is he around type thing? Because um, the, the Suki interaction is one of the more kind of like relaxed ones where she's just like, oh, well, you guys are here. Let's have a sparring match type thing. And that's why you have your, your battle at that specific uh, area, ultimately. And so I think for the most part, like there is your introduction to a lot of what's going on in Avatar Generations with like the new content. Like I said, there's, there's more stuff to get into maybe on a deeper level. Um, but again, it's a lot of stuff that perhaps I haven't experienced in the game yet. Items I don't have, characters I don't have. Um, we're still quite early on and so we don't really know the exact scope of will there be more with these characters or what but just the fact that like at least a few of the characters have gone like sort of like cross kind of areas like they're not just in one area so like Bokin and uh, Katsu are not just um, Shen Guan characters they do appear also in um, Razor Reef similarly Kiwak is in Icebound Labyrinth and Razor Reef, it makes it seem like she is going to pop up at various points in the story. Now, on that side of things, you know, the the idea is like, you know, the, the whole like the team avatar kind of like uh, inclusion in all of this is a kind of little bit like this is one of the areas where it's more of like for gameplay purposes, a big area to get kind of like treasure and rewards from. And I'm pretty sure you are not overly limited on what characters you can use in the Icebound Labyrinth and so it's not necessarily like the case that it's kind of like um you know Team Avatar was the one to kind of absolutely defeat them as such so from a canon point of view Kiwak is more of like who the character is and what she does rather than what way the fights necessarily play out because of course for gameplay purposes you're going to be having a lot of fights that aren't necessarily actual fights, you know, in, in a story sense, kind of. So the, the, there's there's that stuff to kind of keep in mind as well. So it, it's more of just like, here's this almost like side event where like a group of heroes defeats Kiwak and and suddenly you're, you're more kind of maybe treating some of these smaller little things as, as less being 
Team Avatar solved this problem and more like Avatar kind of uh, the Legends RPG stuff uh, where it's more of like characters defeated her and it's more that, you know, a fight happened but it wasn't necessarily with that. And that's why I think they, the wiki has taken to doing this, like a group of, of adventurers uh, was the one to, to help out in this situation because you theoretically could have done these fights without using any Team Avatar members, any notable characters <laughs> as such. So, yeah, and then, like I said here, Fifth Nation stuff and so on. So, pretty interesting overall. So, yeah, in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are so far. Um, and, and, and like I said, it doesn't seem like a ton, but I like that it's not over the top. Because if it's meant to be kind of slotted in, fitted in here, um, I like that, especially the stuff that, like, say, Team Avatar interacts with isn't more than, like, it needs to be. Um, just from the kind of, why why did, why did we not know about this thing before kind of perspective. But let me know what your thoughts are on a lot of these characters. What uh, interests you? What stood out to you? Was there any little details that I didn't mention in the video that you feel uh, ne needs to be brought to my attention? Let me know in the comments below, but that has been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.